uh, we can have a lot of fun with this simply by warming it up. We've done the big things. We're going to do two things. Warm something and create a really nice grated wash here. So how do I warm here? I take a little bit of cadmium, put it on, put it on here, just like that. Then clean my brush. So you have a bright color note here. And now all you do is fade it out. Fade it out by adding water to your brush. Just like that. That's not going to be that yellow when it's finished. But even if it is, all you have to do is lift it off a bit if it's too yellow. So there's the grass coming right up. And as things get farther away, they lose their color intensity. So by the time I get to here, you see, it's lost its intensity. Next step, dark to light right here. I'm going to take some yellow ochre. And then I'm going to just take my dry brush. I'm going to come up. I'm going to add some warmth to the picture here. So I'm putting a warm undertone where the trees are in the distance. Leaving a little white, maybe pop it in here. Let that dry. Oh look, uh, the road ends here and then there's nothing here. <laughs> That's interesting. It's like the uh, two worlds there. It looks like the house is sitting up in the air there. So what I want to do is just add a little line here and maybe a smaller little section of trees there. Now this is the other side of the house, so uh, perhaps what I'll do there is add a little more bright yellow there. So it looks like there's grass behind the house also, see? Or bushes, whatever. Now it's level with this spot right here, see? And I can green it up later if I want. Okay, a little bit of the uh, brown behind here too. A little bit of red. Put that little bit of color in there. Take a little, let's make it a little less bold. Let's neutralize it a bit with a, just a little bit of the ultramarine blue. Then we come in here. Holding the brush up. And it's a little greener. Okay, now, now that looks better. Put a little more of the green in there. Tap it in. Oh, this is all crooked here. Look what happened there. That's got to come across here. Now, you think I'd be able to draw a straight line. But if you're not paying attention, there, that's better. So I'm going to use a little bigger brush. And I'm going to mix up a lovely brown using a little bit of the cadmium. It's kind of orange, isn't it? Mmm, that's a nice strong color. And uh, I'll take a little bit of the ultramarine. And the reason being is I want it to be neutral. A neutral brown. Not too warm and not too cold. There we go. So we're going to go dark here, and we're just going to go across the shadow area. See? Just like that. It's a little hard to see upside down. Then I'm going to add a little water to it. Keep bringing it down. If I miss a few areas, that's good. A little bit showing, then turn it around this way, and give it another little swirl like that. And remember, we can erase all these lines if we'd like to. So for the shadow area, now that I've decided there's a shadow there, I'm going to make it a little more dark. Now ultramarine, that's a grainy color and this is Arches paper, so it should look pretty good. I'll come right off in here and just give a little swipe, a little swipe, little swipe. See, isn't that great? Doesn't that add a little interest in the side of the road here? OK, 
Okay, very good. And where the house is, the shadow on the road, where the house is, see? And now we can do a little bit on the trees. We can give it a little bit of the brown. Hey, the bark on trees is brown. That's one thing we know. Not always, but. And on the side of this tree, we're going to come right down beside it like this. And on the underside here, I'm just putting a little, little bit of paint here and there. A little bit of paint. That's all. Nice. You can put a little shadow in there. No, not really a shadow, just a little texture. Next thing I'm going to do is put a little quick little wash in the sky. I'm going to turn it upside down. Watch my edges. And what should I do to the sky? If I make it darker than the tree, it'll really stand out. But what color do I use to put in the sky? This is a neutral and it's kind of uh, violet. So let's make up a violet. Let's stick with a secondary color and not get complicated. We'll take a little bit of the phthalo. There's a nice violet. And put my brush in the water and add lots of water to it. And let's begin on the light side. I'm going to edge out all my little limbs. Now to do that, you have to have a very good brush that has a point on it. But it's not difficult. See? And for those of you who like to do a few controlled things like this, this is a great little simple technique to do, but you can't do it with a cheap, cheap brush because it won't hold the paint. But with this brush, I can hold a lot of paint. It's actually like a felt pen. Now I've done all that, so um, I want this, everything to go to the top and let me pick up some of that paint, see? See me picking it up? Picking it up. I can even use the side of the brush. And why? Because I need to finish the sky. And now I'm going to go over the sky with this. And I want to add some water now. And this little tree here is in the spring. So I'll show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring that close to it, go around it, and leave just a little bit here and there. That's not a tree joke, leave. Okay, here we go, up to the chimney. And on this area here, we're just going to pop it in very simply with our brush. Here and there, even if we leave a little bit of white showing it, that's great. Posts, very simple. Give them a little bit of a shot of a darker violet. I was uh, driving along the highway the other day and Boy, a lot of these fences are falling all over the place. They're all bent and all manner of disarray. There we go. Do a great job on this with just small brushes. Just tiny brush. This is the roof on the other side. I make it thinner. There we go. Dark underneath. That's the soffit. And uh, I can add some of that on the trees too. So there we go, you're moving along on a little picture, adding here and there, little darks, little lights on dry paper. Uh, I find this a little dark. So there's two things you can do. You can lighten it or make this a little darker. Or not necessarily darker, but let's let's make it browner. So I add a little bit of my cadmium there. And I have a nice brown. You know, depending on where you live, gravel can be gray, red, it can be all manner of colors. So I'm mixing right on here with this. See? Mixing right on here with this little brush. 
in the middle, keeping it rough. And once again, this is Arches paper. A little bit of green this time, see? Kind of coming into the shadow area here. Things don't have to be always red, yellow, and blue. They can be different shades. Okay, let's take a little, little bit of the ultramarine. And let's key the color a bit to make it more um, neutral. This looks more like evening time. The trick is to make it blend together. And then the paint will do its own mixing as it dries. Yellow over here, another bright yellow. This one has a little bit of phthalo in it. Water. Come right up to the fence posts. Over here it's a little brighter. Pull it up in here. Hey, I could make this fall simply by really going big on the oranges. Let's put a little few darks into the, into the road. A couple darks. Let those spread out. Add a little water to them. Not sure what that is. There we go. Side of the house. Inside the windows. Shadow on the tree. Hey, let's make that dark green for the shadow. A little red, a little green. Whoa, we went a little bit hard there. Looks like I got a little red on the end of my brush. Think of this as like a quick little study. You don't want to get too serious about it. You're just kind of trying to find a nice balance for everything. I could go a little darker on the shadow here. A little shadow underneath the soffit there. Now watch what happens when I do that red in the chimney. The whole picture comes alive. And I use a nice bright red. On the other side, I add a little bit of blue to the red and get the shadow side. And I can put in some of the branches. Notice I just hold the brush and pull it. I'm always surprised at how wonderful the colors turn out when you just leave them alone. Three little accents in the road. Take a little green. And I'm going to lose the road, see? There we go. Pull this green right up into the road a bit. And one last dark to tell me where the road ends using some of the um, cadmium red, a little bit of burnt sienna, 
and a little bit of the phthalo blue and we're going to add a little quite a dark right in there a couple darks well placed will always make your painting look interesting and we can do some more darks later there's some well-placed darks 